Amnesty International apologized on Sunday for the distress and anger caused by a report that they released last week. The report accused Ukrainian forces of putting civilians in harm's way by setting up bases and operating weapon systems in populated residential areas. However, Amnesty declared that they stand fully by their findings while maintaining that they regret the pain caused. Amnesty also added that by no means does the report mean to blame Ukraine for violations committed by Russia. The report drew such strong reactions within Ukraine that Oksana Pokalchuk, the head of Amnesty International's Ukraine office, resigned. Pokalchuk stated on Facebook that she was resigning from her post as she could neither get the report changed nor removed. Polkachuk added that she opposed the report while also arguing that the report provided context for supporting Russia's discourse around the war. Ukraine's President Zelensky declared that with the report, Amnesty was attempting to grant amnesty to the terrorist state and to shift blame from the aggressor to the victim of aggression, reported Politico. These residential areas in the report included schools and hospitals. According to Amnesty, such tactics by Ukraine turned civilian areas into targets for the Russians, leading to the death of civilians and the destruction of infrastructure. Amnesty argued the following. Viable alternatives were available that would not endanger civilians, such as military bases or densely wooded areas nearby, or other structures further away from residential areas. However, the report added that this pattern did not apply to all areas of Russian attack. Specifically, in Kharkiv city, the Ukrainian forces did not turn residential areas into operating commands. To corroborate its findings, Amnesty spoke to survivors of Russian strikes and attacks in Mykolaiv, Donbass and Kharkiv. Amnesty reported that survivors said, Ukrainian military had been operating near their homes around the time of the strikes, exposing the areas to retaliatory fire from Russian sources. The report further found that the Ukrainian army was using hospitals and schools as de facto military bases. Amnesty stated five hospitals were being used as military bases. The report added that out of 22 of the 29 schools visited, Amnesty International researchers either found soldiers using the premises or found evidence of current or prior military activity, including the presence of military fatigues, discarded munitions, army ration packets and military vehicles. And Amnesty concluded the following. The Ukrainian government should immediately ensure that it locates its forces away from populated areas or should evacuate civilians from areas where the military is operating. Militaries should never use hospitals to engage in warfare and should only use schools or civilian homes as a last resort when there are no viable alternatives, the report added. In other news, the Russian embassy in the United States capital of Washington, D.C. went on a verbal offensive against the Ukrainian armed forces on Monday as these diplomats accused Kiev of repeatedly shelling the now Russian-controlled Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Ukrainian nationalists launched an artillery strike on the territory of the specified object on 5th August. Two high-voltage power lines and a water pipeline were damaged as a result of the shelling. Only thanks to the effective and timely actions of the Russian military in covering the nuclear power facility, its critical infrastructure was not affected. This is not the first provocation by Kiev at radiation hazardous sites. The shelling of the Zaporizhia NPP by the Ukrainian armed formations is deliberate. In order to discredit Russia, the Ukrainian authorities do not shun anything, creating a real threat to the nuclear security not only of Ukraine, but of Europe as well. The embassy statement read. For the print, this is Raghav Bikchandani, content written and researched by Suchet Veer Singh. For more, log on to the print.in and follow us on social media.